So to all the goddesses and gods who see the God in me, before I go any further, to all of the queen goddesses, to all of my fellow king gods, and to all of the beautiful, lovely star seeds out there, I see you. I love you. Now, this video right here that I want to present to you is just a video that I was um, that breaks down how all of these sci-fi movies um, are speaking about us. The Credible Hulk, Batman, Superman. Batman is really the white man, but Superman, any action hero that has any kind of powers, they are speaking about us. We are the gods and the goddesses of Earth. Point blank and simple. Earth is not even our home. Earth is just a planet that we travel to. We have we travel to planet to planet, star system to star system throughout galaxy to galaxy. Do not limit yourself to Africa. We are infinite light beings. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video was very informative to you. From here on out, I hope that you start watching these movies for knowledge. Watch it. Look at it with your third eye because they are all talking about us and them. There is a war that's going on bigger than fucking Russia, China and all that shit. We, 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 we are in an intergalactic war. And we have been caught in the middle of it, but we have been trapped out of it. But now that we're going into the age of Aquarius, we are going we are going to back into the age of peace, 2000 years. And we're going to know everything that went on and work for full beat before we head there. As we going into the cuffs of it, you're going to see that sky fucking open up and you're going to see our sky family do their job. That's all I'm going to say to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace and love to all the queen goddesses, to all of my fellow king gods and to all of the beautiful, lovely star seeds out there. I see you. I love you. X-Men Apocalypse Decoded. Produced by the Conscious Kings. For the conscious individuals, entertainment should not be your focus when watching movies. Gaining knowledge should be priority number one. It has been said numerous times by those in the know that the X-Men canon is loosely based on blacks from ancient times. Heck even the creators of X-Men have admitted on record that Professor Xavier and Magneto were based on the personas of Martin Luther King, Jr. and Malcolm X, respectively. That makes sense. Note, my thoughts and perspective on this film is my own. My intention is not to influence yours, but to share and dialogue. Let's begin with the background on the title Nemesis Apocalypse. And for your own benefit, please disregard the tired plot of good versus evil so you can understand clearer. He is claimed to be the very first mutant from time immortal. He is able to transfer his consciousness over time from one mutant body to another. This symbolizes ancestral reincarnation and how knowledge and wisdom was passed down amongst the generations of black male on eight people concerning our culture and abilities as a people. This is common belief within ancient African spiritual cultures that still exist to this day. In the beginning of the movie, set in Egypt 3600 BC during the height of black civilization no less, this routine transfer procedure was taking place. It occurs in one of the great pyramids, with the help of the horsemen of apocalypse and Egyptian guards, who are white Arabic of course, as well as the rest of the population. We all know that Egypt had a predominantly black population during this time period. But this information is not promoted in the mainstream. The pyramid is used as the portal for the transfer, which is activated by the sun, a black man slash woman's best friend, remember. The guards, who are secretly against Apocalypse, succeed in disrupting the procedure, defeating Apocalypse and his horsemen, rendering him into a coma-like sleep for over 5,600 years. According to many sources on ancient Africa, this time frame translates accurately to the downfall of black civilization. The knowledge of mutant origins was lost. Sound familiar? This symbolizes how our entire culture was lost and signaled the deterioration of our advanced civilization. This was a civilization that respected nature and the earth, where all its inhabitants who were blessed with the gift of melanin were entombed with the planet and each other. In the midst of its fall, a new highly advanced, albeit destructive, civilization arose at its place. The movie is then shifted to the 1980s, during Cold War times. The mutant population, symbolizing black melanated people, is in a fractured state. They are underrepresented and marginalized people, who are unfairly vilified and dehumanized by regular humans, symbolizing the majority of Caucasian, European population. In one scene, the mutants Nightcrawler and the Winged Angel are forced to battle to the death in front of, I assume, an all-non-mutant crowd, which symbolizes blacks participating in meaningless sports to please the masses of fools. Also, we get a good glimpse of the main X-Men characters during this time. Mystique, the transforming blue-colored mutant, has resorted to hiding behind her regular human form to survive, just like many blacks fit into Western civilization through whitewashed appearances to blend in. 
the mutant king of metal Magneto, with the persona of Malcolm X, remember, has succumbed to a regular human life of metal making, go figure, with a wife and mutant child on the side. He understands the true nature of regular people he serves but only wishes to live a life away from his past transgressions, symbolizing his black radicalism, towards the powers that be in the previous X-Men installments. Professor Xavier, with the MLK persona before MLK became radical himself, and Beast run the Xavier Institute for the Gifted, with young mutant students such as Jean Grey and Cyclops. This symbolizes how blacks, knowingly and unknowingly, indoctrinate themselves into the current system from kindergarten to post-secondary, or college. Professor X knows the capabilities of regular humans and how their fear could ultimately lead to disaster for the mutants, but he believes fitting into their society will benefit the mutants' welfare. During this time back in present-day Egypt, a secret society, symbolizing underground radicalized blacks, has sought to bring about the awakening of apocalypse, symbolizing black man slash woman awakening. The CIA has been keeping tabs on this society, symbolizes how the FBI slash CIA has blocked slash prevented black liberation over the years. They are successful with their task, and Apocalypse arises from his 5,600 plus year slumber. Apocalypse notices the predicament in the current world landscape. He wakens to making statements such as the weak has taken over the earth and calling those in charge false gods, which symbolizes whites in control in reality. He recruits a young Storm, Angel, Magneto, and the telepathic and telekinetic mutant Psylocke to rebuild his horsemen. He enhances their powers in the process, symbolizing their awakening to their gift of blackness, or melanin. His goal is to bring an end to the current paradigm and bring about another world conducive to willing mutants, symbolizing the end to Western civilization and returning the planet to its original people. Raven returns to Professor Xavier, which is a trick to the unawakened, to warn him of the ensuing cataclysm, but it is too late as Apocalypse kidnaps the Professor and has plans to use him as his next host to transfer his consciousness to. He is enamored by the Professor's ability to connect with all living beings, regular and mutant, having the potential to control their minds as well. He tells the Professor that he does not need a machine to enhance his telepathic powers, symbolizing a time in the past where blacks were so connected within themselves that there was not a need for external materialism or devices because they had the gift of melanin. So of course, the X-Men go and fight Apocalypse and his new set of horsemen to prevent the transfer. Quick note, Apocalypse is able to create a pyramid from scrap metal, gathered by Magneto, with the use of his powers alone. This brings to question how the Great Pyramids were really built, considering that blacks built the pyramids and again, no one has ever replicated them. At first, Apocalypse vanquished the X-Men with ease with the help of his horsemen, but soon thereafter, Storm and Magneto defect from the team, losing their awakening, and Angel and Psylocke are defeated. This leaves only Apocalypse to fight the X-Men and the newly defected Storm and Magneto. Apocalypse is able to hold off the surge until the meek but supremely telepathically gifted Jean Grey is prompted by a near-dead Professor Xavier to unleash her powers, destroying Apocalypse for good, I was disappointed. Symbolically at that moment, Jean Grey represents the one thing that truly prevents the awakening of blacks as a whole all over the globe, black women's unwillingness to break from the current paradigm. If all human life begins and ends with the black woman, then it's safe to say that overall consciousness is dictated by the black woman. To consider that possibility, we must assume that mutants represent blacks as I reiterated before. Imagine the white X-Men characters are the whitewashed representation to hide that fact. They add insult to injury by bamboozling an already unconscious audience to believe that the white woman is our savior when the white representation of Jean Grey comes to the rescue at the movie's end, SMH. The movie is scripted in such a way that it subconsciously programs your mind to be against any entity that threatens the status quo, of the Matrix. With a closer look, Apocalypse does not actually cause any actual harm to any civilians unless he feels threatened. And any mutants that were harmed, it was caused in part by their ignorance to protect the status quo, choosing not to embrace or even consider Apocalypse's perspective slash point of view. Just like mutants, X-Men, blacks who are not conscious continue to fight against their own freedom and liberation without any realization or thought to what they are doing. We have been told what is good and what is evil since birth, not even considering or even entertaining the idea that maybe what we find as evil could be for our own benefit. But if we want to continue to integrate into Burning House, as Martin said many years ago right before his assassination, Believing that us mutants are just like everyone else in this world, we will soon fall into the abyss like that rest of the regulars.